So, so far in this lesson, our goal is to design a swimsuit. So this is inside of our head. It's a swimsuit idea that we have. We want to get onto paper, send it off to the sample room and have this made for us. And this is the final rendering that we're going to do today. So I've already done all of the texture and inking. So this is what your project's going to look like when we're finished. So far, what we've done is we've done all of the coloring with markers here from the back. So all of the shading and shadows and everything. And now what we need to do is from the front to start adding our color pencil and some of our other mediums as well as inking. All right, so the tools that you're gonna need for finishing our girl with texture and inking is gonna be all of your pink and purple color pencils, including white, along with a piece of sandpaper. And the sandpaper should be around 120 grit or higher, like 150 or even 200 grit. You're also gonna wanna have all of your brown color pencils, including anything that is cream, yellow, or if you have some metallics like silver, gold, copper. And then you're gonna wanna have your pink as well as your craft brown. I know I kept saying mocha in the previous demo, but it's craft brown. Your recollections um, white opaque marker as well as your jelly roll white. Uh, your detail eraser and then your complete micron set going from 005 all the way through eight. The handouts that I'll be referencing is the swimsuit handout just to kind of look at texture as well as the hair handout. And this one's from the back side. If you also printed from the front side, we need to use the one from the front side. So if you have this, if you printed this one out, we'll be referencing this. If not, you can always just look at it on your laptop or on your cell phone as we're talking through it. All right, let's get started and let's finish up doing uh, texture and ink. So for the majority of this video, we're gonna be working from the front side of the paper. So make sure you're on the side that has the happy face and this is where you put all your pencil. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start coloring this in using color pencil as well as doing some cleanup, touch up, and then eventually inking. If there's any of your pencil drawing that you didn't like and you wanna get rid of it, now's your chance to take that off. Also, before we get started, of course, go ahead and wash your hands. Make sure they're super clean and dry so you're not getting all kinds of weird fingerprints on top of this. And I also like to have a uh, clean piece of paper. So if I'm doing something like coloring her hair with color pencils, I'll have the paper down here so my palm isn't rubbing onto that face of the drawing. When you start to color on your drawings, I always like to start at the top and my, work my way down. So I would do the hair first, then I would color whatever the bodice is, the top layer, and then I would come down and I would start coloring whatever's the bottom layers. On her skin, I don't do any textures. So for me, as a designer, all of her skin at this point is done, except we just need to come and ink it. Down at the shoes, I might do a little highlight or something, depending if they're supposed to be glossy. But a lot of times, basically the shoes are done as well. So the majority of what we're gonna worry about right now is taking care of putting some texture here on the swimsuit as well as getting her hair. Now for me, like I've said before, drawing hair is probably my weakest of all of my drawing skills. And mostly because I'm so focused on drawing clothes. And then for me, because I'm a draper, pattern maker, and a sewer, I like to start go ahead and getting into actually making the swimsuit in real life. So coming all the way down to doing some really fancy hair for a fashion sketch to me isn't super important. Keep in mind that if you want to get really good at drawing hair, there's tons of great tutorials on YouTube. And I highly recommend to try some of them just to get a sense of drawing hair in general. But just keep in mind as a professional designer that hair and shoes are not as important as the garment. This is the most important part of your fashion drawing. Now, if you take a closer look at somebody's hair from a photo, obviously how this is made is it's 
thousands and thousands of little tiny hairs. And all of those hairs are different shades of her color. So for instance, if this is a brunette, she has brown hair. This is thousands of different strands of hairs in thousands of different of colors of brown. The thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to get caught up in drawing thousands of little tiny hairs, especially when as a fashion designer, it's not as critical that the hair looks super amazing. The thing we want to do is we've taken her hair and broken it down into certain sections, which you could call clumps. So different clumps of hair traveling in different directions. And what we want to do is we want to just keep emphasizing those clumps. And how we'll do it is we're going to use some color pencil to draw some of the dark areas and a little bit of some of the light areas and just leave everything else as it is. And then we'll finally come back in with some ink just to get a few more areas to pop out off of the paper. The first thing I want to do is we want to get used to figuring out which color pencils work great for her hair. So come over here where we did a practice swatch for using the craft uh, brown as well as the uh, bl clear blender. And we're going to put down some more craft brown here so then we can see what our color pencils are going to look like. So be sure to turn your paper over. So this is the back side of the paper. And let's come in here and we'll do a wash of craft uh, Brown. A nice even wash and also keep practicing using this without getting any brush strokes. So here I'm just doing a good two and a half, three inches almost. And we'll let that dry completely. Now that it's dry, let's go ahead and turn this back over. So again, we're at the front of the paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to practice doing a couple swipes of your different colored pencils. So for me, what I want to do is I want to take my lightest color pencils, which includes white, cream, and yellow. And I'm going to put those here at the top. And then I'll arrange my color pencils to go from lighter to darker. So what we're going to do is, from the front of the paper, go ahead and just do a line of each one, keeping these in order. So for me personally, what I like to do is whenever I'm coloring something, I always like to use three. So for what we're going to do here, I want you to pick one of your favorites from the dark. So for me, I like this second, second one down right here. And then when I come up to medium, I like this fourth one from the bottom. So that's this pencil right here. And then for my light, I don't want to quite do white. It's a little too bright. The creamy tone right here seems okay. The yellow seems okay. I've seen people do yellow on brown hair and it actually looks really cool. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with just kind of this creamy, creamy tone right here. So I have my cream color, my mid tone, and my dark color. Now let's talk about color pencils really quick. As you know, these color pencils, these are the scholar version. You can also get a professional version. And the difference between them is the materials that they use to make them is just cost more. So the scholar, the materials cost less, the professional, the materials cost more. But whatever color pencils you have, do not drop these. If you drop them, then what we're calling the pencil lead, the color part, inside of here will break in different areas. And you'll know this because you'll be sharpening your pencil and all of a sudden the thing just falls right out. And then you sharpen it all the way down to another section and boom, it falls out again. So you know at some point you had dropped that. So be really careful to never drop these. Also, when you're sharpening them, if you have more of a, a cheaper pencil sharpener like this, Sometimes these will work amazing when they're brand new, but as they start to dull out, they don't quite work as well. And this might also be what's breaking your lead. 
So for me, if you're gonna start spending some money on some really good color pencils, you might as well spend some money on a good color uh, pencil sharpener. So this is called the Dahl or Dale. And basically what it is is you can adjust the lead, how, how sharp or dull it's gonna get. And then this is gonna pull it in perfectly vertical and it will stop sharpening once it's done being sharpened. So it's not gonna just keep grinding away on your pencil. And one of the tricks to this is there's this little red thing here at the end, and then there's a little black nub showing. And the shorter you make that black nub, the less sharp your pencil's gonna be. So for instance, on a color pencil, you don't wanna get them too sharp because you're just gonna wear them out immediately and you have to sharpen them again. But if you have this so there's barely any of that black nub showing, and then you basically you take, you slide this out, you pinch this, and it's gonna clamp onto your pencil and be pulling it inwards. So right now my pencil is totally vertical. And then as I sharpen it, right there, it stopped. It's no longer sharpening because it reached that sharpness level that we set it at. And this is not gonna waste your pencils and it'll always sharpen it to exact same level every time. So that's what I use for my color pencils. From the front side of your paper here, I wanna do one more quick tutorial on hair. And this will be the world's fastest uh, tutorial on how to get the basics for doing hair. This area right here where we're using the clear blender to show some light areas, what I want you to do is draw something that would be like a eye shape, like a cat's eye, or if you're drawing an eye for a person, or a football. So just put in this basic eye shape. Now everywhere where the hair is gonna be tight coming into area, this is where there's gonna be darkness. So in here is darkness and out here is darkness. So with your darkest color pencil, follow what the hair is doing and be dark inside of there. And as you come out to here, don't put any darkness. And then now, once it starts to travel back into this end, get dark again. So I'm following the direction, and I'm doing some hairs that are close together. Now the next one is move up to your medium size, and now we can get somewhere out to this area. So we're, again, we're following the curve that the hair is flowing. We're throwing some strands in there. The last one is come out here to your highlight. This is gonna be your highlight area. So these are gonna be far apart. And just out here in this area. So again, the dark comes into little pointy corners and close together, boom, boom. The medium is just somewhere out in the middle. And then the highlights are out here where it's wide and open and your lines are far apart and not very many. So this is just the basics for doing clumps of hair. Let's come in here and start to do her hair together. Now when you do this, you have to reference a photo. For me especially. So have your photo ready and bring your girl on top and you're gonna notice that because this paper is translucent, it messes up what's happening from behind. So you still have to have a clean piece of paper on top of your drawing or underneath your drawing so you have a clean white background and then you can reference what you're looking at here with her hair. During the previous videos, what I've been doing was I would do some narration while I was coloring but for the texture video, I think we can move through this a little bit quicker. So what I'm going to have you do is just watch me uh, color her hair at three times speed. And then afterwards, you can pause and then do it yourself. So here what I'm doing is I'm starting with my darkest color pencil. And I'm going in and I'm finding these areas where it's just tiny little corners. And I want to have dark going into those corners. And then... I'm getting lighter as I come out of the corners. Down in here I'm working close to her neck and ears so all of this would be dark as her hair is wrapping behind her body, around behind her neck. 
and then I'm just getting a few little dark areas out to where some of the curls would be flipping over. Now I'm switching to a mid-tone. Pretty much what I do with my mid-tone color pencil is I'm going back over the uh, dark areas that I just made and I'm toning them down and I'm kind of smudging and smearing those dark areas around so that uh, it's not too dominating. And now my highlights. For the highlights, I kind of like what's already on the paper. I'm just using the highlights now to tone down my mid-tones and to use it almost like a blender where I'm just kind of smoothing out any of the harsh edges from my two previous pencils. So that's one side. Now let's work on this other side. Now that I'm ready to switch to the other side, I want to sharpen my pencils again just so everything looks really nice and crisp and clean. And that way both sides look the same. I also took a minute to just uh, wipe away any extra pencil dust or anything, and now I have a clean piece of paper where my palm is going to go so I don't smear any of the color pencils that I just did from the other side of her hair. Basically, as we go through this, I'm doing the exact same technique. I'm going to start dark, and I'm going to start inside all of the little pointy corners and work my way out, and then I'll use the mid-tone to kind of tone down all of my dark stuff and then I'll use the lightest color to just kind of blend everything else together and I try not to get too crazy I like leaving a little bit of the paper showing through so don't feel like you have to cover every single inch with some kind of a color pencil For me now, at this stage, that's plenty. I've already done plenty well enough. You know it's hair, you know it's flowing in the wind, you know she's a brunette, done. Later on at the end, we're gonna come back and we're gonna ink everything, including her hair, and we'll get to that later. Now let's start talking about putting some texture here onto her swimsuit. At this stage, you could put away all of your brown and light tan color pencils, but keep your white color pencil. And now let's come in here and we're going to work with our sandpaper as well as all of our different pinks and purples that you have. And the same thing that we did here to test our color pencils on top of the craft brown, we're going to go ahead and lay down some pink so we can test our different color pencils here onto the pink. So turn your paper over to the marker side and we'll lay down a row of pink right here. So take out your pink marker and again we'll do like a three inch wash of pink from the marker side. And again you're always practicing trying to get a beautiful wash without any brush strokes. And then bring this over here to the front. Make sure there's some clean paper behind this so we can see the true color of the pink. And then we want to, again, arrange our color pencils, starting with white on the top. And then we'll move down with the lighter colors, moving into the darker colors. So let's lay down some swatches, starting from the top and working our way down. So here's going to be our white, top of the pink. Now as you do this, something you'll notice is some of these pencils might look dark over here and you put them on top of here and they're not that dark at all. And some of them over here might look really light. Like for instance, this pink looks like it matches this pink, but once you lay it down, it's actually kind of dark. And then some of them turn out to be very red looking or very blue looking with this pink background. And that's the whole purpose of why we're doing this. 
Now for me, whenever I do apparel, I always like to have white as part of my highlight. It shows that the fabric is really reflecting light back to your eye. And then especially with swimwear, you want it to look a little bit silky, satiny-ish. So for me, I already know I'm going to use white for all of her highlights. So that's my highlight pen right there, or a uh, color pencil. The next thing I want to have is a mid-tone as well as a shadow. So you need to decide as a designer, do you want to have a reddish shadow or kind of this bluish shadow? So even though these are both purples and violets, you have to decide what's your base. Is it gonna be a warmer shadow or a cool shadow? So for me, I think what I'll do is, since I'm kind of using these warm colors for her skin, put some pinks in here and everything, I think for my shadow, I wanna use more of the warmer. So I'm gonna use this color here, it's called Mulberry. Basically it's a violet color purple. I always forget which is which. And then my mid-tone, funny enough, I think that the pink that matches right back to this pink does a really good mid-tone, but at the same time, will her pink swimsuit look too bubblegum pink, which some people hate that color and some people love it. So you need to decide again, do you, have, do you want to have more of a classic pink or do you want to have that true traditional bubblegum pink? So I think if I go with this kind of reddish shadow and the white highlights, if I use this pink here, then this would be a good mid-tone for me. Another thing that helps also with choosing your colors is if you have an actual swatch of the fabric, then really you're just trying to match what are the highlights and lowlights within that swatch of fabric. So if you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, I'm using Mulberry for my shadows. This pencil here is just pink, and then this is white. Now to get ready to start shading this and doing texture on this, what I've done is I've taped a piece of paper here on top of all this other information so I have a white clean background. And then I have my girl on top of here, and then I've taped her to this clean piece of paper. But I wanna have room to where I can get this piece of sandpaper underneath there because the sandpaper is what's gonna give this texture. So go ahead and set up your paper like this now so then we can start to shade her in. Remember that her skin, we're done with that. We're not gonna add any more shading, shadows, texture, nothing to it, it's finished. And then we came in and we used the color pencils in her hair, but just flat on the tabletop. Now when we start to color in clothing, we want to have some sandpaper behind it, and this is going to give you these little tiny texture dots. And it's super important to have that because you want this to look like it's fabric on top of smooth skin. Now the downside to the piece of sandpaper that I have is this is a purple color. So watch as I slide this underneath my wet or uh, swimsuit, it already makes her darker than she really is. So, I have to be careful when I'm doing my white highlights that I don't keep making it whiter and whiter and whiter trying to brighten it up. I, all I want to do is I want to see that white is getting on here and then once I pull the sandpaper out you'll see all the highlights from that. Whenever you're doing color pencils on top of the sandpaper what you're gonna notice right away is, if I lay down some, oh, let's do this here. Let's do a little practice right here. So get your sandpaper behind this, whatever's left over on your swatch right here. And if you need some more room, go ahead and, and make some more and then come back to this point right here. When you're using the sandpaper, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use all of these little peaks on the sandpaper to our advantage. The trick is though, once I start coloring her swimsuit, I cannot move the sandpaper from underneath. Because as soon as it moves, even just one little micro titch, then all those little peaks shift it over and you're not gonna get the effect that we want. So it cannot move once it's in there, once you start coloring. Okay, so watch me first and what I'll do is, I'll go from light to medium to dark. 
Now I'm using the side edge of the color pencil, not the tip straight down. And you can see I'm picking up all of the peaks from the sandpaper underneath. And that's all I want, boom, done. Now you'll notice when you come in with your mid-tone and you'll be hitting those exact same peaks. And all of that white is actually disappearing. And it almost feels like this color pencil scraped all the white off and put the new color down. That's how it's acting on here. Now when I come down in here for my shadows, I wanna start at the bottom and work my way back up towards that pink. If you look super closely, you can just barely see, yes, there was some white in there somewhere. Just barely, but a lot of it's gone. And there seems to be a hard edge here where my pink stopped. My pink mid-tone where I stopped. The dark does a really good job of fading into the pink and kind of disappearing without having any kind of a harsh line. So I'm gonna to try to achieve that here with my pink. But a lot of times what you have to do is, because these compete with the white, you have to come back and get the white one more time to blend back into wherever you wanted it. And I could even start to put some white here on top of my mid-tones, and that mid-tone is staying on the paper. And even if I come down into the dark area, the dark area is still staying there as well. So I'm able to get a little bit of white to come back all the way down into here, but the white doesn't seem to scrape off the other colors. So for me, that's kind of how I like to do the whole thing. I like to get some white texture on the whole entire garment. And then I'll come back and I'll start working in my mid-tones and my shadows all in the areas where they should be. And then leaving everything else white, leave it alone. And then if I feel like I lost some of my white texture, I can still come back on top of those mid-tones one last time. So I'm gonna start shading in my girl with some textures. And just remember that the photo reference is the flip-flop side. So I have shadows all along this side here and her shadows are along this side here. So just remember that you're doing the opposite if you're referencing back to your photo. So watch again here as I'm gonna do this at three times the speed. And then at the end, you can pause and do this yourself. So I'm going to start by getting my white basically for the whole entire garment because this is a swimsuit and the fabric has a little bit of a shine on it. So now I've laid down just one layer of white color pencil and I'll put my clean paper here on top just so you can see the actual color. And I'm just trying to emphasize the fact that this is a textured fabric. Also, since it's a shiny swimsuit, the white really helps to bring out the shine. Now, before I start to go in with my shadows and mid-tones, if there's any place that I want to come in and touch it up, so anywhere where the pink marker bled out beyond the drawing, I could come in here with the Recollections marker and go ahead and clean up just a few areas, let that dry for a second. And then when I come in to start coloring, I'll make sure that I'm staying right inside the swimsuit. The reason I like to lay this down first is because if I accidentally get some onto her swimsuit, now's my chance to go ahead and color and get that color back out of it. And I want those areas to dry, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get a few other spots out here on her arms while I'm waiting for the swimsuit to dry. So I've gone back in a couple times, I'll let it dry, put a little bit more on, let it dry again. Obviously this is something you should do right away before we start doing the sandpaper. But now that I have that, I'm ready to come in here and I'm gonna work backwards. So now I'm gonna get my darks 
in the shadowy areas, and then I'll use my mid-tones to kind of take that darkness and knock it down a little bit. Now I'll put some clean paper behind this. For you, you don't want to do this because you don't want to move anything. But I want you to be able to see at the full color of exactly what's going on. So I've come in here and I've given myself some texture in the shadowy areas. At this point, there's almost starting to become a problem. The problem would be is, if this is supposed to be a light pink swimsuit, why is it so dark out here? So this is where we're going to come back with our mid-tone and our white and we're going to start to knock down some of this shadowy area using these two in combination to, to keep the shadow behind here but to make it look like it's still a one pink even colored swimsuit. Now switch to white. <sighs> At this point, you want to make sure that you totally love what you've completed with. So if you want, if there's a way that you can keep that sandpaper exactly where it is, Put a clean piece of paper behind and look at your artwork with the white background and just make sure that yes, you love this before you finally pull out that sandpaper. So for me, if there was any spots that I felt like I got too dark, then I can come in with my mid-tones and lights and again, just keep knocking them down by drawing on top of those peaks of the sandpaper. And then the vice versa, if there's an area where I feel like I didn't get it dark enough, I could come back in here and just add a little bit more to it. So for me, I like how everything is. I feel like I almost even got a little too dark, so I'm never going to go back with this. And if I were to do anything, it would just be taking my mid-tone and just toning down a few areas where it just feels a little too purpley and not enough pinkish. And if you had a swatch of fabric, then of course you would be sitting here looking at your swatch of fabric and getting the exact same colors across. Now while the sandpaper is still behind there, be sure not to wipe or smear or do anything because what's going to happen is you're going to just tear the paper and there's going to be all these little tiny physical holes in your paper. So just make sure you don't color too hard and don't do any kind of a smearing on this. Now at this stage I feel like I'm good to go. I'm all completely finished with texture. So I'm going to move that out of here. There's a few areas where I wish that the white was a little more dominating. Now that I have this flat on a tabletop, I could come in here and actually get a few kind of crisp, sharp 
white highlight lines. So for instance, there's a few wrinkles here where her the straps from her topping are, are holding the swimsuit up. And then there's a few just kind of little shearing gathers right there. And then where the elastic is laying flat on her body, where the binding is coming up on her hip, where the hip is hitting the highlight from the spotlight here. I want to come in and emphasize a few of those areas with white on the flat tabletop. And for this one, I'm going to adjust my pencil sharpener to put a little more of a tip on there. So you can see where I'm adding to this black nub at the end. I'm making that slightly longer now, which means the tip will be sharper. So I'm going to add just a little more sharpness to my white. Now just keep in mind that as you're working flat on the tabletop, your color pencil is now going to start smushing all those peaks that you had, so you're going to lose a little bit of the sparkle. So when I'm doing this, this is only in the most brightest areas on the fabric. And after doing something like this, if you feel like you lost a little bit of that sparkle, you can always put some sandpaper back behind this and get some of those peaks back into your drawing. Now after I've come through and I've done some white highlights with the flat tabletop, you lose a little bit of that sparkly texture, which I really want to keep here on her swimsuit. So I'll put the sandpaper under one last time and just get a few of those sparkles back into here. And mostly just because this is a silky fabric. All right, so I think that's good enough. Uh, basically, at this point, we're ready to start inking our girl, and then we're completely finished. Now, at this point that, um, oh yeah, I hate when I do that. Whew. At this stage, I'm ready to start inking. And what I want to do is I want to get everything out of here. I want to get all my color pencils, pencil sharpeners, anything extra totally out of the way. And this, this part of the drawing is really important that all of your line strokes are smooth and even. So I want to have lots of room to move this paper around, nothing in my way. So go ahead and get your areas ready now to use just this with ink. So for this last part, I have my area totally cleaned out. I want to have my white recollections pen, my uh, white jelly roll, and then all of my markers or all of my ink. Also, one more time, I'm going to go ahead and just wash and clean my hands because I'm going to get in and really get some detail as I come in here. And then now that I've laid down some color pencil on here, I want to be really careful that I don't keep doing this, which I have a bad habit of doing, and you're going to end up smearing color pencil all over the drawing. So get ready to do this, wash your hands, and come back, and we'll do our final inking. Now, if you're watching this video for coloring, and you've never seen anything that we're talking about for doing the inking, you can always go back to the videos for inking the advanced static pose, walking pose, as well as the standing pose. And you can see all the different rules that we do for doing the inking and using the different sizes of the pens. So if you need to, you can go back to those. And there's also a uh, one video talking specifically just about using the ink pens themselves. Now take out your size 8 micron pen. What we're going to do is, down here where we were drawing the color pencil on top of the markers, I want you to take your size 8 and just draw right on top of all of this here. And you can see that the ink goes over all of these different colors really well. Then take out your white jelly roll and do the same thing here. And you can see you get a nice crisp white pin line 
that goes over the colors. So if you're really coming in to get some white on there, sometimes you'll have to draw a few times. So in a sense, you're stacking the layers of Jelly Roll on top of each other. So you might need to let it dry a little bit, come back and get a little more on there. But it is possible to get white back onto your paper, even though you've laid down marker. This is, works really well too when you look at it here in a dark area. Then you can really see the white coming through. And basically it's like a paint pen. So you gotta let it dry, come back and hit it again. And if you keep pushing on it too much, the, the roller ball itself will actually start cleaning the jelly roll off. So you have to have a combination of how hard you're pressing. So you'll just get used to it as you go. So go ahead and practice some white lines with that and some black lines with your size 8. Now also look for a nice clean edge on one of your washes here, either from the brown or the pink. And what you could do is come out here and follow the edge. So I want my black ink to be halfway split between on the white paper and on the brown. So then we get a really crisp distinction from white paper coming in and stopping and then the brown color coming in and stopping right at that ink line. Now anywhere where it's too jagged that the width of your marker can't do both, that's where we need to come in and make sure our recollections pin is helping you to get a cleaner line. So if this was supposed to be a curve right here, then I want to come in and hit this once, maybe twice while it's wet. Let that dry completely. Then I can hit it again and again until we have enough to where we can come back in with our black marker and get a really crisp line like this. So while I'm letting this dry right here, I can come out onto the body and find areas where my chart pack markers went outside of the lines and I want to come and start getting my first layers of the recollections marker now. So I've come in here with my recollections pen and I've got this curve. So I did it once, let it dry, did it a second time, let it dry, did it a third time. In the meantime, I was out here on her legs and her feet and just getting a few touch-up spots, doing the same thing, layering it once, let it dry, layer it a second time. So now that this is completely dry, if you remember, there was some zigzags going on with the pink marker from below. Now I can come back in here and I can get what I intended, which was just one clean curve. And then you have the pink marker coming right up to the ink and the white paper coming right up to the ink and nothing's competing off to the edges. If you do have some areas where there's some flaws, some marker is sticking out beyond her leg or beyond her hands, for me personally, I think that actually looks kind of cool because this was not made by a computer. It was made by a human's hand. And to have those imperfections is actually, I think, valuable. So let's get started by using the 005 Micron pen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get her eyebrows, eyelashes, nose, lips. I'll get a few details here on her strap, maybe a little bit of this inside of the tiny strands in her hair. And then a few little detail areas here on her swimsuit as well as her thumbnail. Now for my girl, I didn't do any kind of makeup, but what I do like to do is I'll take some white color pencil and I'll just get a little hint of the whites of her eyes before I ink it. And then also this girl, I have her mouth slightly open so I came in with just kind of a reddish pinkish color and I came in and got basically would just be what would be her tongue inside of there. And then I went ahead and started inking it with my Micron number 005, just doing the details in her face, a few fine details in her hair. I got the strap here because it's difficult to do with a, with a thicker pen. Some details on her collarbone and her throat, down here on her swimsuit, as well as the top edge of the binding and her thumbnail. 
Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to come in with my jelly roll and I want to put some highlights on her eyes. And just remember, the highlights have to both be on the same side of the eye. So don't do it mirrored where the highlight is flip-flopping. Make sure it's from the same side. And then I'll come back in after that's completely dry and I'll hit it with the black one more time to get the pupils nice and clean. And always remember, you're never doing a full circle. You're always doing some kind of a little tiny half moon shape. Three quarter moon shape. All right, so let's move on to the size one. I wanna come in, I wanna get her neck, her ears, her jawbone, and then I'll move down into her hands with the size one, and maybe a few little wrinkles and some other details here using this. And now that I have her jawbone and neck all drawn in. I've been going in here with my size one ink and I can now touch right at that ink from her neck and jawbone and then pull out into her hair. And this helps her neck to really pop out off the page and it feels like her hair goes behind her. So I also went ahead with this, this larger pen and I got a few of the shadow sides of her straps. Emphasize this a little bit here. And then the side of her swimsuit where it's in the spotlight, I went ahead and started to draw it using the size one. And then when we come to this side here, we'll use the larger size number three because all of this is in the shadow. And then I went ahead and got her hands on both sides. And also now that the uh, eyes are bone dry from that little jelly roll highlight, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get her pupils like this. And the black ink goes right on top of that white jelly roll, no problem. Now for the size three, we're going to do all of her skin and the shadow side of her swimsuit fabric. I might come in and get a little bit richer, or darker areas in her hair, and then I'm also gonna start framing out her shoes. Keep in mind at this point, we do not wanna have perfect inked edges all the way around. Wherever there's highlight areas, you want it to be very little ink or none at all. So you should be starting under the swimsuit, come out into the light and just stop. And where her knee is bending will be dark down in this area. So do not draw perfect ink the whole entire way. So here's an example of what I would do on her arm. And this is the shadow side of her body. And as I turn this corner and come down, I want to start to lighten up. So I'm lifting my pen off the paper to lighten that line. And I can come down into this joint area where I know it's going to be dark. And I'll just connect this dark all the way to her wrist. So somewhere in between these two, I want it to be not so crazy dark and I don't need to connect the whole way. Inside of here, it's going to be dark the whole way because this has a lot of uh, shadows. And then I'll come in, I'll use the same marker and get the fabric on her swimsuit. So you can see here on her arm where I stopped inking just for a second. If you wanted to, you could even switch back to your size one to make that smaller. Now out here on this shoulder, I want a combination of one and three, because remember, this is our light source hitting her shoulder and her arm. So for sure I'll use three on this underside, and then I'm gonna use one as I come out onto this side here. So it's dark going behind her swimsuit. I'll start there, come out to the light, and I get my line thin. It can be dark here under her forearm and at the wrist. And then I'm just stopping completely right there. Here we'll get her shoulder. So now I'm switching to size one. Her shoulder's nice and dark. Going behind her hair. Down here at the joint. 
and then it's very light and nothing at all up in that area and on her forearm. So similar to the areas where you've given her a little bit of a sun sunburn pink color is now where we're barely having any ink at all. So if you have start and stop points, make sure they're where the light is the brightest. Okay, so so far what I've done here all along the sides of her legs and arms was I'm using size three whenever there's like a crease or a joint or one leg is behind and the other one's in front. So I'm using size three up in here, all along the side of her arms, going in behind the swimsuit here, her shoulders. And then I would transfer onto size one. So for instance, out here in the light, I'm using size one and there's even spots where there's nothing, no ink at all. So it's, the shine is so, it's either shine or the highlight is so bright right here, you just, you don't even have ink, so no ink there. And then you can see the separation between this is the back leg and the front leg. And here I'm using number three on this leg and I'm using number one right here on the leg in front. And then I use number three all around on the shoes. We'll talk about some more about the shoes in just a minute. And let's talk a little bit here just for finishing up her hair. So, so far on her hair, what I have not done is I have not come up here and framed out her hair using a marker, using the ink. Now, normally this would be pretty much done with what her hair is, but see how I'm framing out her shoulders and her arm and hand, everything using ink to get this to pop off the page. Well, I'm going to use the same style here on her hair. So I just want to frame out the top of her head a little bit, maybe a little bit here inside of this. And I might use the number three along her neck again one more time. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And then some of these strands here I got a little bit crazy with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some in white, which will make these start to taper down quite a bit. So basically I'm using my white color pencil just to knock down some of those stray hair strands that I put off the edge of the paper. And then I'm going to come back in with my number three marker and just kind of outline her hair a little bit. Basically this is a no-no. You shouldn't do this if you're doing like actual drawings or paintings of people. But for fashion this is totally acceptable. So pretty much that's good enough for me. I've already spent way too much time on this hair anyways. Now some of my students like to go in and do makeup for their girls. So to do a little bit of eyeshadow on there, a little bit of blush on the lips or uh, on the cheeks, and they'll come in and do just a little more definition here on the lips. For me personally, I don't even bother with it, but you can do that if you want and um, just kind of figure it out on your own especially for girls who already do makeup for their faces. They already have an idea of what they want to do for this girl. Let's come down here and let's talk about her shoes. So these shoes, if you want to make them look just a little bit glossy, a little bit shiny, what you can do is taking your jelly roll down here where her big toe is, come and just throw some white on there like a little white V. And then up here where the straps are, if you want to do some cross hatching, so you remember cross hatching is like this. Well, I'm going to do just a little bit of cross hatching here on the light side. So remember this is our light source. So just a couple little tiny cross hatchings right there and here. Just to make it look somewhat glossy. Now this shoe here, we can't see her big toe, so we're not going to do some kind of a hit like that. But I can do a little bit of this cross hatching here as well. And since I've done that here, I might as well do a little something here. So just a little cross hatching there. Now for the flip side, whatever dark pen or dark color pencil I was using here, I could use them to emphasize the shadow side 
on her shoes. And I'm not worried about texture, so I'm not putting sandpaper behind here or anything. And again, I'm gonna continue just doing some cross hatches like this. And I'm making sure my pencil's super sharp. And let's come in here and we'll just get a few little shadow sides cross hatch. And then here on the straps, a couple and a few back here. And then to emphasize the glossy highlights that we did, if you do some cross hatching in between each one, you can actually make the white look whiter. And then here at the tip of her toe where we did this glossy hit, do what would be like a cast shadow below the glossy hit. So it's almost making the gloss pop up off the page. So a little cast shadow under that. The last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take out my size eight micron marker. And usually the sole of the foot is really thick and most likely it's black. So what I'll do is I'm just following the same shape as the bottom of her shoe. So here we have a pointy heeled shoe. If you're doing Mary Janes and it's rounded off, it doesn't matter. Or if it was tennis shoes or something, I'm gonna follow exactly whatever that tip of the shoe is doing. And using my number eight, I'm just gonna stack a couple more layers going down. So whatever the width of the marker is, or the ink pen, I'm just doing two more heading down. So if this is one, and then you do one more just below it, so now it's double wide. That's all I'm doing. I'm just doing two strokes with the size eight going below it. And this will make it look like she has a nice non-slippery sole of her shoe. As well, it feels like a shadow and it makes her feel like her foot is touching down onto the ground. So all in all, that's it. You're basically done. The most important thing on this whole entire fashion drawing is the swimsuit itself. And the most important thing is, is how you drew this. So your elastic at the top, the straps going around her neck, the straps are uh, connected all the way down here below her bust level, the binding on her hems, the color of it matches your swatch of fabric. So everything that you've drawn here, you should be able to send this off to the sample room and then what you get back is this exact swimsuit here. So imagine this is what was inside of your head, this is what's on paper, then you're gonna see it in real life. So that's the most important thing here. So no matter how good you are at drawing hair or shoes or fingers, the most important thing is right here, the garment that you're drawing. So taking one last look at this, Basically, we did her hair with Kraft Brown. We put in some clear blender wherever we wanted these highlights to stay. So then when we did a wash, they didn't stain too dark. We came back, we emphasized it with different shades of brown color pencil and then some of our ink pens. Her face is done with the light sand all over her skin. I came in and I touched her eyes with a little bit of the frost blue. And now that I look back at this totally bone dry, her ears could be a little bit richer with color, so I'm gonna stack them one more time. And her eyes still aren't super blue popping out, so I wanna hit those one more time as well. I'm gonna do that real quick here on the back. So I'm just gonna get her ears, the little more light sand on there. And her eyes, I'm just gonna hit them one last time. And again, I wanna make sure that my pen isn't too stainy. So that's good enough. So then we did her strap going behind her neck. It's a couple layers of pink. And then when we did our third layer, we waited till it was bone dry. We did a few shadows. And then I used a combination of the size one and size three pens to get some of the shadowing coming from this side or the highlights on this side, the shadows on this side. Her neck and collarbone, chin and everything, that's all size one. Out here on the light side of her body, I used size one. And then in the shadow sides of her body, I was using size three on the Micron pens. We did her pink swimsuit with a complete wash. 
And then uh, we did some shadowing with the pen from behind. So you remember we did all this work from behind, several multiple layers, finishing with a fourth layer, trying to get some hard edges. And then we did our textures with the color pencils and sandpaper. Then we came back and we were using size 005 for some of the detail, size one for on the light side, and size three here on the dark side of it. Her hand, her pink thumbnail matches back to her swimsuit, but not perfectly because we mixed the flesh tone as well as the pink. We got her legs, knees. This is her walking leg. Oh yeah, for the kneecaps, I did nothing. There's still a little dash of a pencil there, but I'm leaving it alone. If you put some black thing on there, it'll look like smiley faces or something. So I highly recommend not to do anything. Down on her shoes, we try to make them look a little bit glossy by doing a little bit of cross hatching with the jelly roll pen and then some color pencil to emphasize that. And then we stacked the bottom sole so it looks black and it also looks like a shadow on the ground. If there's any last thing that I would do is this walking foot going back into space, sometimes I will take a marker and I'll just do a quick little cross hatch coming down here or I'll take the dark brown color pencil that I used up here in her hair and I'll just throw a little cross hatch shadow there. I'll just come over here and see if um, what I think it's either that or this. Yeah, I think I'll do the darker one. So I'm just gonna go below the knee and I'm just throwing a few little cross hatches. Just so your eye knows that that leg is going back into space and this knee is hitting the spotlight. Now that you've finished doing texture and ink on your swimsuit girl, go ahead and scan this page and turn this into me as part of your assignment.